Boys and girls, Alex here. If you happen to be chicken shit and scared of using glass other than for drinking and decide to use Perspex instead, the best way or one of one of the ways I found to glue it together is to use CA glue. However, if you screw up your CA you'll get these bloody great lines out and if you happen to make a oopsie of dropping CA in the middle go oh holy shit don't panic all you need to do is wipe it off when it dries you get this beautiful little film however and again from my fingerprint Except not a blob. So what do you do? Let's see. Do we get a good picture of that? Yeah, we do. And <coughs> don't panic. Throw the tissue away. You don't need that. Here's how to fix. Hopefully. Make sure you put the bloody CA away so it doesn't do any more damage. Now, rather than panic like a chook with his head cut off, first thing I do is reach for my Dusty, dust extractor, duster. I use the Merca. Get a mind of its own. It's got some grit. Let's start with 180. And honestly, you'll freak out when you freak out when you see some of this. I'll keep quiet while I'm doing this because it's going to make one hell of a mess. Now, you may have noticed I got quite brutal with that. Hang on, let me grab a rag. Now, you'll notice, let's have a closer look at the camera. That edge was pretty rugged. It's bumpy or whatever. There, I've, whoop, hang on, where are we? Sanded it all down. All it is is gritty and dirty or whatever. The spot here, I'll get that up. You can also use this for scratches. Now, up next to 240. Actually, while I'm at this, I might as well fix up that other edge. I'm going to leave it for comparison, but while I'm at it, I might as well clean it up so I can make this Perspex uh, reusable. I'll go back to my 180. Yep. Actually, if the mesh is too much, sometimes I even go down to 100 and then work my way up. 180, next is 240. Again, I've done that on the other side. I haven't done anything on the flip side, don't need to. Okay, look, I'm not gonna bore you shitless. Um, I'll go through 320, 500 and 1000, which is all I've got and we'll come back to you when I get up to a thousand. Okay, finishing off with one thousand. As you can see, I don't spend it much time with each grit, but if you have a look at that, I mean, that's just about shower screen quality, you know, uh, frosted glass quality type of thing. Not worth a pinch of shit anywhere else, but uh, except maybe in a snowstorm. All right, I'll now take it over to my buffing wheels and we'll continue from there. Here we are at my buffing wheel. I actually use the 
Beal wood buffer because they're decent sized buffs and they're really just good quality cloth to give you an even distribution. Now I'm going to go through the Tripoli stage then I go through the white diamond then I'll go through the polishing stuff. Now if I use a Tripoli I probably only would have needed to go to about 400 grit or maybe 500 grit but I'll go through the whole lot of it just to give you an idea. Again I'll only do a small part show you what it is then switch it off till I go to the next grit. Far enough this is actually a slow speed grinder so it will take the decent size uh, buffing wheels. This is a triple E compound. There, you can just, I'm sure, let's see, I've got to go and do the camera. You can see the difference already in the polishing bit or whatever. Um, okay, I'm going to now switch it off, and then wait till I do this whole lot, then I'll get on to the... Okay, here we are. I've finished that grit, as you can see. Uh, um, there's a spot there. I was working... Where is it? Oh, come on, where, where are we? Here we are. Spot right there. I worked on it for about five minutes and then realised it was on the other side of the glass, so let's not worry about that one. Okay, now I've got onto the white diamond just a bit of a charge of the thing and again I'll just do the bottom bit one of the things you've got to be careful of with regards to these buffing wheels and that's why I've got a slow speed buffer because at high speeds if you catch an edge they will go flying straight to the concrete and believe me uh, acrylic doesn't or even MDF or any timber doesn't dent concrete it's the other way around I'm off for the cameras. Okay, that's done. Here we are again. Sorry, I have to look at the camera to see what you can see. Um, that's normally, well, that's it for this exercise here for the moment. Hang on. I'll now show you. Normally what I do for timber, I've got this other buffing wheel, which is wax, and I usually offload one of these. Um, I've actually got myself a... Uh, one of these ratchet things I've marked on there for closing and opening so if we were opening it do that bam and oops, do it back up again so it's a quick thing normally that's what I do for wood however I use a car polishing compound to finally buff this up and I don't want to contaminate this wheel with it and rather than use up another one of these buffing wheels for that I'll now move over to the lathe where I've got a small buffing wheel dedicated for this polishing compound which I use for my pens and continue from there okay here I'm at the lathe now what I actually have is I, what I use is this hang on let's get it right it's uh, called plastics uh, car polishing compound you probably get it in any decent well, I was going to say car wrecker, no, I wouldn't be getting it a car wrecker, but detailer or whatever, or auto shop. Give it a good mix. Now, you'll notice this is a small, much smaller buffing wheel, um, only because it's dedicated for this stuff here. As I said, I don't want to contaminate. So you give this a bit of a squirt. Oh, hang on. You probably don't know whether you can see there or not. Gave it a bit of a squirt, got a um, tissue and smeared it all over it. Now that's got a nice very light cutting compound in it and as I said this, this method can be used to remove deep scratches, any flaws out of perspex. Look you, you could probably use it on glass if you really wanted to although I'd hate to see the glass shatter in my hand. Okay again what I'll do is I'll do a small bit of it and then uh, we'll get back from here. I've actually got this set up at 2000 revs I can slow it down, but that'll do with this small wheel, it's not as big a problem. It's just a matter of manipulating 
this thing so you don't keep hitting the sides or the bed or whatever. And you'll find that you're not, I'm not spending much time on it. That's about all I'll spend on that. Then I'll move around. I'll look. For the sake of this exercise, I'm, I don't think I... I might as well just finish it rather, you know, I'm not going to save that much video. Oh, by the way, it's a, not an overly used wheel, that's why it's fluffing like crazy. Um, I usually finish up looking like bloody Santa Claus um, after doing this with all that fluff on me thing. The only thing is I didn't have to grow a gut to look like Santa Claus. There you are. That's it. Now, oh, I've got a rag here. Yeah, a nice dirty rag. Give that a quick clean. How's that? Oh no, that's... Look, that could probably use a bit more buffing. Just down there. Or is it on the other side? Hang on. Yeah. Bloody idiot. It's on the other side. Um, but there you have it. From what was a completely mangled piece of perspex, that's especially on the edges there too, that spilled bit in the middle, and any scratches that were actually there are now gone. Now, as I say guys, I hope this has helped and if it hasn't, well, stick to glass. The only problem is it's nearly as good as glass, but uh, it doesn't hold a drink too well. You pour it on and it'll just overflow. Anyway, catch you later. Bye.